Okay, let's go. Hello, my name is Esteban Iriarte. I came today as a GM of Colombia with uh, Leopoldo Gutierrez, who is the CFO of our business in Colombia. Maybe it would be interesting to all of you know that uh, Leopoldo and I, we worked together for the last five years. At the beginning was in the cable as uh, he was the CFO of Net, and I was the general manager when we bought Net in 2009. I joined to the company, to Millicom. But before than that, I was the latest 12 or 13 years working in the cable business. In fact, my experience in the cable business. So only in 2012, I moved to Colombia at the beginning of 2012, in fact, it was in May, uh, as a general manager of the mobile business, yes, as a for, time, for, for first time ever for me. Um, one of the things that you will probably remember is that from 2009 until now, we did a lot of great things in Millicom. Yeah. We really improved our telecommunications company. We moved from the uh, voice to the data to the digital life data, as Hans Holler said. But they couldn't fix my English. That is a thing that they couldn't, yeah? So I, I have some warnings for you. One is, if you don't understand a word, ask to your partner. If he doesn't understand, probably it's because that word doesn't exist, yeah? <laughs> so write it, and we can talk after that. Um, let me uh, start saying the things that I, uh, being seriously, the important things that I have to mention about Colombia. Colombia is one of the most attractive emerging markets for investment in Latin America. In fact, we are very, very close, and we want to be the second in the telecommunication markets in Colombia. That is incredible, because for, someone, for some of you that know our history, you will see that in 2006, I think, Mario, we bought Ola, and that from that day to on to today, it's only year, eight years, and we moved for a $500 million company to what we have today, that is a $2.3 billion company, so an amazing growth through the years, an amazing history to tell to all of you. And something that is important also is that we build a very, very strong strategy for Tigo at the beginning, at that moment, and we also are doing the same in this new moment of the company. We joined, uh, we merged with UNE uh, only five weeks ago, and in fact it was four for me because this week I was here working with all of you. Um, so I think that the best way to introduce Colombia to all of you is by a video. Everybody has a video, so I bring my video too. What a beautiful and incredible country that we have there. It's, it's something beautiful. I moved a lot of time in the last nine years. It was incredible. I, in fact, I moved more than nine times in the last 11 years. Uh, but I stayed for the last three years in Colombia. And what I learned there, it's a fantastic and incredible place. I live in Bogota, now I'm living in Medellin. It's a fantastic place to raise your kids and be with your family. It's a very secure place. In fact, they have a beautiful ad that it says that the only risk that you have in Colombia is to want to stay there. And it's true. I think it's true. Because after a while, I said, look, this is a very beautiful country to live. And, and we have a few Colombians there that can support my words. But beyond to be a beautiful country to live and live with your family, what it is is a very stable country. That is what we have. It's a country that is growing. This year, the GDP will be more than 4.5%, but historically, it was around 5 You can see there also in the chart that our population give us scale. So we have a stable country, and we also have a scale. In fact, when we talk about the scale, what you can see is that Colombia is bigger enough, more than 1.1 square meters total in, in Colombia, that, and we are focusing five important regions. Yes you can see in the chart. But 75% of the population lives in urban areas. That allowed us, with our spectrum, to go there and sell our products through the years. But if we have a scale, how is our market there? And our market, you can see, that is growing at 7% through the last years. And also, we have, and this is a chart that I have to say thank you to one of you that they are sitting there, that shows the opportunity Yes, that we have. Because when you compare Colombia with the rest of the country, we still have a huge potential to increase the share of wallet that we have in our customers. In fact, we are only 1.2%. But something that is always important to explain, it's if you have a fantastic opportunity there, if you have a huge and incredible scale to share with all of you, yeah, 
do we have the skills to go there and deploy our strategy and, and deliver the results that we are, uh, we are expecting? And the, only on, and the only thing that I can, couldn't bring is this chart that it shows how we performed in Tigo through the last years. As you can see there, and I, I mentioned a few minutes ago, the average of growth of the market is 7%. Yeah? It, it was in that way for the last two or three years. But when you see from 2012 to now, how we perform in that market, it's incredible to see that we will overperform in over the average with a huge gap that we extend over year and year, quarter by quarter. In fact, you can see there that the first half of this year, we grew at 27%. That means more or less four times more than the rest of the average of the industry. And we are the smaller ones. But we, will, we want market share too, yes? For 11.8, as you can see, more than 3.5 market share points to bring this history to 15.4. Yeah. So we deliver. Our mobile data revenue market share, now in that chart, it says that we are the third ones. But in fact, we are the second ones. Why? Because with the merge of UNE allowed us to add to our mobile data market share three additional points. So we are, we are today the second ones in the data business. And the data business is the, day, the business of the future. So that is the reason why we focus there, we put all, all our effort, and we did it. Still, we have a long way to go. 15% of market share, of course, is not what I want to sell of you. Yes, but it's a very, very good story uh, through the last years. Also, I, I have to say, when the people ask me how your team and, 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 and Millicom, in fact, deployed this strategy and how they won through these last years, I said, we have something that is unique in this country, and it's our brand. Yes. Our brand is unique, it's healthy. Our red, uh, oh, sorry, that is one of the words that you have to delete. Yeah? Network. Our network is incredibly good. Yeah? We have a very good customer experience there. Yeah? So what I am saying is when we focus in music, eh, in music, what we did was, in fact, we focused the target that we want to have. That means the young people. Because they are the people who really move the market in terms of smartphones. When I arrived to that in uh, to, to Colombia, um, what I found was that the position of one of our competitors and boys was so high that it was difficult to go there for the community effect that they have. Yes? So we went through the data, through the music. And we became, after a while, incredibly, in less than 12 months, the largest, yes, largest music distributor in Colombia. And what we want there was more young people to our brand. That is what we bring. In fact, we, we were adding around one million customers each year from the last three to our customer base. And that give us scale, give us volume, and give us the chance to show to the people of Colombia what we have to offer to them. So now I think that it will be the, the part that you will Enjoy it really, that is the UNE merge. But I have another talk about UNE. But uh, maybe you don't realize it because for my accent you think that I'm he from here. But in fact, I'm from Argentina. Yeah? And in 2004, I was working in, in, in Multicanal, was the name of that company at that moment, telecommunication company from the Grupo Clarín. And they sent me for first, first time ever to manage the merge, the acquisition in fact was, but finally was a merge between the two most important companies that it, it exist at that moment in Paraguay. It was CBC and Multicanal. So that was my first approach to a one merge. That was 2004. 2006 was my second approach to a very important merge. At that moment it was between Multicanal and Cablevisión. Together they consolidate more or less 60% of the market. I was the person who was writing 50% of the bid of that company in a region, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the line, yes, with more than 7,000 employees at that moment to be merged. Yes. After that, I moved to Central America, El Salvador, and in 2009, 
I was responsible first to stabilize the business of a net that was the largest Central American cable operator. But after that, together with Medicom, I merged it also that company with the mobile. Yeah? So why this is relevant? Because it will be not my first merge ever. Yeah? I already did, I already worked. I think that with a very good plan, with very good team, you can do it. And of course, it will be plenty of uh, challenges, but it's something that I feel that we can do and we have a very, very good plan and we will go through that plan right now. So the first thing that we need to understand in terms of what we have right there, it's um, everybody talks about UNE and TIO, but in fact we have another subsidiaries that are under UNE, like you can see there, that is called Telefónica de Pereira, Edatel, Orbitel, and Emtelco. Telefónica de Pereira and Edatel, there are companies that they are local, yeah? They are in one area of the, in different areas, in fact, but they are local companies doing the same business that UNE does. That means that they distribute cable, they do B2B, and they also had fixed telephony. It's around uh, $100 million each, roughly. Uh, one of them is bigger than the other one. Uh, but uh, on top of that, we have Entelco, who provide, Entelco is a call center plus a BPO, who provides services to UNE, Edatel, ETP, and in fact, they were selling us, as a TIGO, uh, the call center, and they were supporting us through the last I don't know, five or six years. So it was a very, very important. Why is this company relevant? Because there we have 14,000 employees, which is a lot of people that we have right there working in the call center. And finally, we, oh, we have Orbitel, who is a wholesale data voice retailing calling card that has a small team based in Spain, and also we have a, a small team based right here in Miami. So that is the structure that the company that we have. We have also in the pay TV business, we are the second ones, as Martin mentioned, uh, with 22% of market share, and in the broadband side, we have 30%. Just to, to share with all of you, that number, 30%, is really, really close in terms of fixed broadband from our competitor, who has, the most important one, has 32. So we are really, really close with them. This is exactly the same chart with the same uh, source that we use to explain the mobile business. Yes. In this case, it's the fixed one. So you can say, okay, here the, the performance, the dotted line is the average of the market. So you can say, okay, the performance here is not so clear that it's so good as it was in, in the TO brand. And I say, look, let's check it again. Because what we have there, it's a company with roughly three million home passes that is competing with another company who has more than six million home passes. So with the half of the, 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 the opportunity, they are performing really well. And they, in fact, they perform, as you see there, over the average of the market for, through the last years. That champ that you find here, it was a um, um, one, how do you, yeah, it was a one B2B, but what is the word? One shot? One off. One off, that is the word. Uh, a one off sale that the company did in, at that moment, so to, to the government. So, but if you remove that, you will see that we are over, over the average with the half of the compasses. So as a quick conclusion, we can say, okay, one of the strategy that we have to do in the future is to grow our network. Because if we have the skills to sell to the customer, it's obviously we will need to grow our network in the future. Um, and also it's a company that is interesting from the content side because they were doing a lot of things. They did an IPTV, 300,000 customers, they did HD, they have an app, they have streaming, they have a lot of things. And I think also that the part that we will, the value that we will find in that company, it will be through the focus that we can give to the company. So we will work, and we are working seriously in to bring some focus to the company so we can allocate our resources in the right way, in the long term, and the things that Millicom believes, digital lifestyle. So here, a breakdown of the, the different market share that we have across the business, as, as you see, uh, the pay TV business, uh, where we have 22, fixed telephony, where we have 27. As I mentioned before, this, that is a very, very important pillar for me, that is the broadband internet, uh, where we will have the chance to go through and, and, and with the, all the knowledge that we can bring from the manage of the broadband and the data in the country, we will go 
and growth there, and I think that is the future, as I mentioned before, too. And finally, the mobile telephony, where they have um, the 4G network in 2600 spectrum, um, that is part of the thing that we need to solve in the next few months. So, our vision, it should become the leading telecom digital lifestyle player in Colombia, as a definition, as, as a vision, as a, as a way to keep our road over the, the different uh, moments that the company has. How we will do it? We will keep our vision in the mobile data, in the mobile arena. That means to be focused on data, digital service, provide excellent customer experience at cost efficiency. Because one of the things that you can challenge me is, okay, you grew a lot in the mobile arena. How was your EBIT at that time? As uh, you can see, it was a plan where we are growing our EBITDA, where we grow up our EBITDA over the last year. Home passes, as I also mentioned, I think that what we need to do is to grow up our network. That is what we need to do. We need to invest there to, have to, to gain more scales in terms of home passes so we can go there with our fantastic products and services and sell it to our customers. And finally, B2B. B2B start to be really relevant in Colombia. This business, it would be roughly $400 million. It already are, in fact. It already is $400 million in Colombia for us. So it's really relevant. There we have a very strong team. At that moment when I present in 2011 in London, I was the responsible for the cable business, but also for the corporate business. Because for that who loves the history, when the cable or the fixed operator put their networks, the B2B was almost marginal at that moment. So I always was involved in the B2B business. And clearly, in Millicom, I did as a global person for deploying that. And now I have the chance to have a full portfolio in terms of B2B that it will be really interesting to manage. And we already set up there a person who is important for us. This is a chart that I think everybody already see it. In fact, Hans Holder used a part of this chart in, in his presentation. But I want to put um, special attention in this other part of the chart where we talk about the complementarity that we have in the regions. Because we are really strong in the coast region, that is Barranquilla. 50% of our customers are there in the mobile side. But from UNE, they almost have no customer there. On the other hand, UNE is really strong in Medellín, Antioquia, El Valle de Aburrá. That is the area where really uh, UNE performs really well. Yes? But I, from our side, from the, from the side of Tigo, yeah, it's still an opportunity. We've been, we have been growing really fast through the last year and a half. In fact, the number there was a growth of 30%. 3-0, so it was fantastic. But still, we have the chance to go there. So we can focus in that two areas, and we will, gain, we will win a lot of customers in the next uh, period. How? If you are someone who came from the telecommunications, something, this is the full toy store for you. Because there you have everything. You have all the toys. You can really add value if you understand the customer, because you can offer him everything that you want. Yes. Again, it's a matter of, of to have the right strategy, to deploy very well, to deliver. But now we have the full portfolio. We did incredible things. The both of companies did incredible things in the last years. But they were competing with the competitors who had the full portfolio. And we haven't. Imagine what we can do right now with all these products going to the customer. But this is really serious. It's a huge merge, huge. 30,000 employees between the indirect and the direct. So a lot of people are there. And we need to have a very, very, very detailed plan. What we did was we support our vision, our experience with benchmarks. We bring BCG, who is an expert in PMI, and who helped us not now, a year and a half ago, they start to work with us yes, to prepare the plan. We have a legal restriction to go through the companies and work together. 
And that was the reason why we expected to that this moment to start to build the, the business plan. Of course, we have a business plan, we have synergies that we will see, uh, but now we are complementing that experience that BCG plus the people of Egon Sander plus the people of Spencer Stewart bring to us yes, to prepare this plan. So this plan has five stages. The first one is the setup that is already done. The second one is the uh, mobiliz mobilizing. Third one, the firm future uh, state business, implementation planning, and finally the implementation. So you will see there that in each of these stage, we have clear targets, and I will show some of them a little ahead. To build a company that in his baseline is $2.3 billion, and we hope to get there, and we will confirm the number that we gave you to all of you last year, of $600 million on NPV value. Yeah. So that is what we have until now in terms of synergies. But I know that you are expecting to have all the detail, how much in OPEX, CAPEX, EBITDA, and everything. But we want, and we are really serious in this area. And something that we did in these four weeks was we prepared the team that is part of the setup. And in that setup, we, after that we build the team, we send each of them yes, to their areas. And they came back to us with a list of projects. Yeah. That's that list of projects we complemented with the benchmark international that we know with our experience. We check it with the people of BCG. We check it also with our first business plan. Yes, And we build this matrix that it has 202 projects there. And we already realize and we already find that we will found that we will have 63 projects that there are quick wings. And all the rest are in, in, in different areas, as you can see there, between the impact and the complexity that it has for us, yes. So we, now what the teams are doing is they, they are working in each project to, to put the right number that we are expecting in the next quarters that we will share with you in terms of synergies, yes, and in terms of how much of any will be OPEX, CAPEX, and EBITDA. So, how we will build it. And I think this is really important. I'm, I'm sure that you will ask me a lot in, in the question on the Q&A part about the, where is the main risk that we have. And I think it's a cultural risk, yes? Because these companies are two companies that are based in different regions. One, for, for the people who know Colombia, they will, they will know what I'm saying. But to be from Bogota is like to be in another country if you are the, from Medellin, if you are Paisa and exactly in the other way. And our company was based in two different places. One part of them, Tigo, was in Bogota, and the other part was in UNE. So there we have two different corporate. Secondly, the other thing that we have is that UNE was a company was run for the mayor, wasn't for the mayor of the city, but in fact was from the Medellin. Yes, it was public, it was a public entity. Um, and in our side, it was a Millicom company or, or a merge between Millicom, UNE, and ETV. So our way to behave in the company, our cultural aspect were really different. So something that I learned in the former merge that I did was that it's really, really important to catch up the different cultures to try to understand how you can get the positive side of each of them to introduce it in the new company. And it's difficult for a manager like me to change your team in the middle of the, of the something like this. But it's also something that I believe is indispensable. So what we did was we bring the people from Tigo. 30% of them that you are seeing in that chart are coming from Tigo. 30% of them are coming from UNE and their subsidiaries. And 40% of them are coming from outside, from the market. Some of that people, we bring, we bring them from, there are Colombians probably, but they will bring them from outside of Colombia with an incredible experience. If you ask me today, do you have the best team ever? I will say what I have is the best individual people ever in the company. Yeah? Now, what we are doing is to work to build these individual people in one team. And that is the secret of this merge. If we can really show them that we can be a team 
in the top of the company, we will deploy an incredible results in the next years. We, we are plenty, plenty of opportunities in the company, plenty. Wherever I go, it's incredible. But don't imagine UNE as a company who was staying the time or, or it was too public. No, no. UNE is an incredible, vibrant, unique company that the people who is there, it's proud. And what I found when my first month there was that in Averas they are really, really better than what I expect. Yeah. So let's see what I told you until now was, and just to, to, to highlight the important things that I think that I, have, I want to deliver to you, it's we really want to be the second ones in the market, and I hope that I will come back in a few quarters and I will say it, that we did it. Secondly, together, Tio Anuno has the ambition to grow, to modify that market, to bring services to the customers, yes, to have, to have a real strategy in terms of the digital arena. And Colombia, again, it's a country that you have to move in. It's beautiful.